Hello, I'm James Milliken. I'm so happy to share the beauty and rich history of this home that my wife Anna and I built in 1876. The homestead is just a short walk from Milliken University and serves as a cultural and educational center for the community and it offers many activities and events for people of all ages to attend and enjoy. Today and the months ahead, you will have the opportunity to learn more about the many interesting aspects of the homestead that we know you will enjoy. Thank you so much for your interest in my home and all it has to offer. I look forward to sharing future behind the scenes at the Homestead episodes with you. My name is Pearl Waddell and I was a young volunteer nurse in 1918 during the Spanish flu pandemic. I remember well that terrible year. Contracting the flu is always miserable with fever, headache, chills, achy muscles, sore throat and coughing. But the Spanish flu of 1918 was far more deadly. When the Spanish flu pandemic finally ended, it had infected 500 million people worldwide and caused between 30 and 50 million deaths. Unlike seasonal flus that are hardest on the young and the elderly, more than half of the Spanish flu victims were healthy 20 to 40 year olds. Victims of this flu generally succumbed to pneumonia. Some people took many days to die. Others would become ill in the morning and would be gone by evening. It was truly a terrifying time. Communities prohibited spitting on the sidewalks and everyone wore masks to protect themselves from the illness. Cities banned public events, closed schools and churches, and encouraged people to stay in their homes. Here in Decatur, Health and Safety Commissioner John F. Mattis ordered the closing of all schools, theaters, billiard rooms, and dance halls. As the disease spread across the Decatur area, the hospitals were filling up quickly. There were two hospitals at the time. St. Mary's Hospital was established in 1876, and the Decatur Macon County Hospital had only recently opened its doors in 1916. Dr. William Barnes, a founder of Decatur Macon County Hospital, became alarmed about the shortage of patient beds. He appealed to the newly established Macon County chapter of the American Red Cross. Both of the Millikens had passed earlier in the decade, leaving the Millikan homestead unoccupied. The Red Cross requested use of the home as an emergency hospital from the trustees of the Millican estate who agreed to the request. Mrs. Millican's personal possessions were moved into the upper rooms for storage. Many community volunteers, including firemen from Firehouse No. 1, worked to clean the home and the rooms were equipped with several beds. On October 18, 1918, the homestead opened as an emergency hospital. The following day, the first patient was admitted, a very ill Bruno Kaler, who succumbed to pneumonia five days later. Because World War I was just ending, there was a serious shortage of medical people. Calls for more volunteers went out, but many people were afraid to answer the call for fear of contracting the deadly virus. Supplies were very hard to come by as well. There were no real medicines to treat the ill. We tried to keep patients comfortable and warm. We worked 24-hour shifts with very little rest, and the work was often hard physical labor. Patients would become delirious and would need to be restrained to prevent harm to themselves or others. The emotional toll was high as well. Watching patients die was very difficult, especially when it was a young mother and her child. 
As the deaths mounted around the area, there was no one to pick up the bodies, so we had to use the homestead basement to hold the dead until transport arrived. It's difficult to understand how terrible it really was unless you were here. Thankfully, difficult times can bring out the best in a community. At Christmas, community members gathered at the transfer house at seven in the morning and headed off to sing carols to the people who were shut in with the illness. Several groups came by the homestead and their visit really brightened our spirits. Even the mayor pitched in to serve as an orderly at the emergency hospital for a time. We were very grateful for any help we could get. And there were two firemen who would come by some mornings and take orders for food from patients and workers. By January 1919, the number of flu patients was dwindling and the Homestead Emergency Hospital was closed. Estimates put the number of patients cared for at the Homestead from October through January at over 200. While the pandemic lasted, there were seldom less than 255 patients receiving care across Decatur. Of the estimated 1,300 people afflicted in Decatur, there were 100 deaths. The influenza pandemic of 1918 caused more deaths across the globe than any illness in history. When the pandemic ended in the summer of 1919, about 625,000 Americans had died. That is 12 times the number of American soldiers killed during World War I. People often ask, with so many deaths, why have I never heard of this pandemic before? I believe there was a sort of amnesia following this time due to the shock of so much loss at the end of the war and from the flu. People just wanted to get on with their lives and put this all behind them. I would hate to have our world go through another time as awful as this one was. Thank you so much for joining us for Behind the Scenes at the James Milliken Homestead. My name is Julie Carter, and I'm a member of the James Milliken Homestead Board of Directors, as well as a lifelong resident of Decatur and graduate of Milliken University. We have so enjoyed having this opportunity to share the beauty and history of the homestead with you, and we will be offering more fun and interesting episodes in the coming months. You can follow us here on our Facebook page to watch for dates and details of upcoming episodes. If you would like more information about the homestead, or you would like to become actively involved with the homestead, please visit our website at jamesmilliganhomestead.com. That web address is also listed here on our Facebook page. If you would like to offer your financial support for the homestead and its activities, donations can be made by following the link listed in the description of this episode. Thank you so much for your interest and support of the James Milliken Homestead.